Hello learners and welcome to a video tutorial over the RC circuit and that is a circuit that contains both a resistor and a capacitor. So what we're going to do is talk about how this, this capacitor is going to charge up and how it can discharge itself. So we're going to start by looking at the loop rule and our goal is to figure out how will the charge stored on the capacitor change over time? Okay, so <clears throat> whenever I turn my, you know, I connect my circuit up and I hook it up, this current is going to flow, and, you know, traditional current is going to flow out of the positive terminal of the battery, and it's going to go around the circuit like so, back in. Now, this I naught is the initial current drawn from the battery that amount of current is going to change over time because at time t equals zero or my t initial what my capacitor is going to do it's going to act like just a wire currents just gonna fly through it no problem but as more and more charge builds up on my capacitor the less and less current is going to flow through that capacitor. And so when the capacitor becomes fully charged, it's going to act like an open switch. When this thing becomes fully charged, there's going to be zero current flowing through the circuit. And so what we can do is we can actually get a function of how that current is going to change over time. Now to start, I'm going to look at the loop rule for this. And I'm going to just start, you know, let's just start right here. And so I go around, I hit the negative terminal of my battery, so negative V, B. And then I keep going, and I hit the positive side of my resistor. So I'm going to mark that down as plus, let's go plus V, R. Keep going around, boop and I hit the positive side of my capacitor. And then I go around and I end up back where I start. So as soon as I get back to where I start, I write equals zero. Okay, we want to figure out how charge is going to change with time. Well, the voltage across my resistor, what I can do is I can say, okay, the voltage across this thing, VR, that's going to be equal to the current flowing through the resistor times the resistance itself, V equals IR. So I can replace VR with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate VB to one side. So here we go. I can just add VB. So I'll say VB equals. VR, we said, was IR. And now VC, the voltage across my capacitor. Well, I know that capacitance is equal to the charge over the voltage across that capacitor. So that means that the voltage across the capacitor, if I just solve for VC, the voltage across my capacitor is the charge on that capacitor divided by the capacitance. Okay. Well, I've still got voltage across the battery, and then I've got current through the resistor, and then I've got charge over capacitance. Now, res the resistance of my resistor is not going to change. That is a constant. And the capacitance on my capacitor is also a constant. That's not going, that is not going to change. What is going to change, however, is the current going through the resistor and the charge on my capacitor. Now, here's what I can do. I know that current is dQ over dt. So I can take this and I can put it in here. So I'll go VB equals dQ dt times R plus Q over C. We're honing in on an equation 
with just one variable on one side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by r, everything on one side by r. So, whoop. So here we go. I've got, I'm going to divide both sides by r. So I've got vb over r equals dq over dt plus q over rc. Okay. Now, I'm going to get this term over to this side. So I'm going to subtract q over rc. So it looks something like this. vb over r minus q over rc equals dq over dt. Now, I've got VB over R minus Q over RC. So I don't really have like terms or like denominators here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by C over C. Really just multiplying it by 1. I'm not really changing anything, but you get the idea. So that gives me, if I simplify this whole side, that would give me VB times my capacitance minus the charge on my capacitor all over RC being equal to dq over dt. Now, reason I did that is because I want everything with a q on one side, there we go, everything with a q on one side, and then everything with the t and whatnot to the other side. So I'm going to get vbc minus q over here, and I'm going to put dt over here. Okay, so uh, just a little cross multiply and divide, so I'm going to divide over this, I'm going to multiply by this, so I end up with, whoops, dt, really times 1 over rc, equals dq over vbc minus q. Okay, we're getting there, we're almost there. What I can do now is I can integrate both sides. Integrate this side with respect to time. Integrate this side with respect to charge. Now, what are my limits of integration going to be? Well, I'm going to start at some time t equals 0. So I'm just going to start at t equals 0. And I'm going to integrate to just some time t. Charge, well, my capacitor starts uncharged. So it starts with no charge and then it will end with some charge q. Now integrating this side is very easy because rc is just a constant. So this just becomes the integral of dt which is just t. So this side just becomes t over rc. This side however is not as simple but it's fairly straightforward. I can solve this integral utilizing u substitution. And I can say that u is vbc minus q. And then du would just be equal to negative dq. Well, I have this and I don't really have a negative dq, so I can say negative du equals dq. And then this integral just becomes negative du of 1 over u. And doing that, and simplifying that integration, I end up with on the uh, left side, or the, excuse me, the right side, I end up with a negative natural log of, I'm going to kind of make some space here, uh, v, b, c, minus q, and then that evaluated from 0 to q. So that's what that integral simplifies down to. So let's take this and simplify it a little further. So still on the left side, I've still got this t over rc equals. Well, now I'm going to plug in q for q, and then I'm going to plug in 0 for q. So that's going to give me negative. If I plug in q for q, I end up with v, b, c, minus q, minus, 
Well, if I plug in zero for Q, I've still got natural log of V, B, C. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's review our logarithm rules a little bit. I've got a uh, subtraction here. And whenever you are subtracting logarithms, you are going to be dividing by that. Now, I'm not a big fan of this negative over here on this side, so I'm going to just multiply both sides by negative 1. So that gives me negative t over rc equals, okay, so I've got the natural log of this minus the natural log of this. I can rewrite that as the natural log of vbc minus q all over vbc just that this divided by this, so VBC. Now again, that's the voltage of the battery in my capacitance. Okay, we are so close. We were, our goal was to get charge as a function of time. We are so close. I want to get rid of this natural log, so I'm going to go E to the negative T over RC equals, now I've just got VBC minus Q over VB. C. Well, I can simplify this a little bit, and I trust you to be able to simplify this all the way down to Q equals. So I'm just going to kind of skip ahead, and we end up with Q equals VBC times 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. Okay. What does that mean? Here's what we've got. We are going to start with no initial charge. So think about that. At t equals 0, anything to the 0 power is just 1. So 1 minus 1 would give me 0. So at t equals 0, I have no initial charge. If I wanted to graph... charge with respect to time. And that charge is the charge built up on the capacitor. It would look something like this. Now, what is that asymptote? Well, the larger and larger this t value becomes, the less and less significant this term becomes. It, it approaches 0. So I end up with 1 minus 0. So the charge on my capacitor is going to equal, at a maximum, VBC. Okay. Well, think about that. Capacitance is equal to the... Um, capacitance is equal to the charge over the voltage. Well... If that's true, then that means when I'm reaching the max charge on my capacitor, my voltage of my capacitor is actually approaching the voltage of the battery. So there's one other graph I could do. Really, there's a couple other graphs I could do, but I'm going to show you. If I wanted to graph, uh, say I wanted to graph the uh, voltage on the capacitor with respect to time it would also look like that. And that asymptote would be the voltage of the battery. Now, I could also graph, if I wanted to, current with respect to time. Now here, graphing current works a bit differently. Say I wanted to actually figure out, okay, I've got a function for charge with respect to time. I want a function for current with respect to time. Well, remember current is dq dt, which means that if i is dq dt, I take the derivative of this function with respect to time, and that will give me current. So I equals, well, it's I with respect to time, I as a function of time. And what you, what you get if you uh, 
take the derivative of this with respect to time. You end up with VB over R times E to the negative T RC. Okay, here's what that means. At T equals zero, that term is one, which means at T equals zero, I start with a current, and that current is just as if the capacitor was a wire. And so I start with some initial current, and that would be I naught. But that current is going to fade. Over time, my current is going to increase. As that charge increases, the current is going to decrease, decrease, decrease. And over a long period of time, your current is going to be zero. So key things to take from this. Initially, when capacitor is uncharged, it behaves just like an open wire and you, it allows all the current to flow through it. As time increases, more and more charge builds up. The voltage on the capacitor builds up, which means the current flowing through the battery goes down.